spaceship hit a rock. We crashed down on the nearest planet and waited for a tow truck. It would only take 3,000 years, so we thought we'd look around and learn about this planet from the creatures that we found. And when they speak, they always sing. So we learn from all the animals how to be an earth. reviewing the notes for today's travel pod, and I think maybe you're misunderstanding that... I am detecting a terrible odor! What is that smell? What? You don't like it? It is extremely displeasing, Mosey. <laughs> my nostril is burning, and all of my eyes are tearing up! It's my new perfume. Cragnell number 5.975. Well, I guess I may have gone a little heavy on it, though. It smells like a baby Googleon dipped in Raplar sauce. Well, I think it smells nice, and I love Raplar sauce. Besides, I wanted to be in the right frame of mind for our show today. <laughs> And why would perfume help? Well, our show today is all about earthlings that smell. Uh, yes, earthlings that smell with their noses. Ugh, we're looking at amazing creatures that are good at smelling things. Ugh, not earthlings that actually have strong odors. Oh, um, could we maybe do both? I may have gotten that part mixed up. I suppose. But only if you wash off some of that perfume first. I'll try, but it says on the bottle that the scent can only be removed by acid bath or blowtorch. Do we have either one of those handy? Never mind. I will just breathe through my mouth. Beaming to all 42 corners of the multiverse, it's a special travelogue edition of... Greetings, interstellar travelers, and welcome to another Travel Pod edition of Flippin' Mosey's Guide to How to Be an Earthling. I'm Mosey. And I am called Flip. Flip, what's wrong with your voice? Please excuse me. I have closed my nose orifice, so I do not have to experience the strong odor coming from my co-host. <laughs> What she means is that today, we will be meeting Earthlings that smell. We'll have some strong aromas on the show today, so if you've got a scratch and sniff enabled device, you might want to tone it down for today's episode. And we will also be meeting Earthlings who have exceptional olfactory skills. Um, say again, why are they working in an old factory? No, Mosey, olfactory. It means the sense of smell. These are Earthlings that are good at smelling things with their Earth noses. You're correct, Flip. We'll be doing that, too. This planet is full of incredible critters, and that includes our two-legged field reporter friends. Yes, indeed, Mosey. <laughs> Some of the smaller human Earthlings have been transmitting field reports to us at 1833-4-Flipmo. We'll hear from some of them a little later on, but first, we'd like to welcome a few guests to our studio. Yes, please welcome the Bombardier Beetle and the Millipede. Oh, look at these cute little guys. Aren't they adorable, Flip? Uh, yes, I have to admit they are very sweet and cuddly looking. <laughs> I love all the little crawly legs. But don't get too close, Flipsy. You might not like what you smell. You see, these earthlings use bad smells the way others use claws or horns or teeth as a way to defend themselves. This little guy here is called the Bombardier Beetle. Aww, greetings, Vicky. 
very small earth creature. I love your antenna. It reminds me of my mother's. <laughs> and the colors on your thorax. Who's a pretty girl? Careful, Flip. When the bombardier beetle gets scared or feels threatened, she might... <laughs> Do that. Yes. It is known that bombardier beetles squirt a hot, stinky spray out of their backsides when they get excited. Ooh, child, I can relate. Especially if you've had Magrup tacos for lunch. Ooh. I know. But it's a defense mechanism for these guys. It works to keep the bigger, hungrier earthlings away. And I'm sorry about the smell, Flip. That's okay, Mosey. I actually prefer it to your perfume. Uh, I'm gonna forget I heard that. That stuff is 86 crow chips a bottle. This next earthling is a millipede. It is cute and wormy and has many small legs. But it is also smelly. Oh, yes. Like our beetle friend, the millipede secretes a fluid that emits a strong odor when it feels threatened. Ooh, like now, obviously. Exactly. You might think that millipedes can run fast because of their many legs, but in truth, they move very slowly. So the stinky smell keeps away anything that might want to chase them. Correct. Next up, say hello to the stink bird. My name is Lisa. Oh, uh, sorry, Lisa, but um, you are a stink bird from Earth, correct? I prefer being called a Watson instead of a stink bird, if you don't mind. According to our research, the Watson is a species of bird native to the Amazon rainforest. Yes, and? Well, uh, you're very colorful. A sort of medium-sized bird with a lot of pretty feathers. I know. And I love the way your feathers do that kind of spiky mohawk thing on your head. It's called a crest. Right. Uh, but, uh, well, um, um... What? We'd like to know why you smell like cow poop. Flip! Well, that is the point of this show. Look, it's a diet thing, okay? I eat a lot of leaves. In fact, that's pretty much all I eat. I could eat other stuff, but I don't. I'm all about the greens. And so maybe... Maybe I get a little gassy. So your digestive system works differently from other birds? From all other birds. I'm special, okay? In fact, the way I process food is probably more like a cow than a bird. Well, that explains the smell. So it's not a defense mechanism? No! I smell like this all the time, okay? That is perfectly understandable. And I appreciate that you feel no need to mask your odor with heavy perfume. Unlike some. Well, I didn't want to say anything, but since you brought it up, what is that smell? Uh, you know, I think that's all the time we have for this segment. Thank you, Lisa the Stinkbird, for... Uh... Watson! Right, Watson. Thanks for being on the travel pod today. Now, our next guest is a unique critter from the region of Earth called Malaysia. Please welcome a baby binturong! Also known as the bear cat, because, well, it resembles both of those earthlings. But it's also got a cool tail like a monkey. Wow! And it purrs like an earth cat! This medium-sized earthling is not as cute as the beetle or millipede, but according to our research, some earth dwellers find it adorable, especially this little one as he is just a baby. Well, it is furry and cuddly, but I bet it's gonna stink up the joint any second now. Actually, no. What? I thought these were all stinky earthlings. These are all earthlings with a distinct smell, Mosey, but we never said the smell had to be unpleasant. Here, have a sniff. Are you pulling my tentacle? No! Go ahead, Mosey. Sniff his fur. Ugh, okay. Oh, oh, that smells like hot buttered popcorn. Popcorn? This earthling smells like hot buttered popcorn, Flip. Yes, it does. Oh, I want one. This is so yummy. Oh, come here. Let me smell you some more. Oh, mm. Be careful, Mosey. Binturongs can be very dangerous, even as babies. He's not dangerous. He loves me and he loves popcorn, too. Doesn't he? Yes, he does. We're going to be best friends. Would you like to know why this earthling smells like hot buttered popcorn, Mosey? Okay, Flip. Why? What about the Bencherong smells like hot buttered popcorn? His pee. Say what? 
A binturong marks its territory by spraying a small amount of popcorn-scented pee around its environment. I'm sorry, baby binturong, but it's over. I have to end it. Don't look at me like that. You know I love hot buttered popcorn, but I just, I can't. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. I'm sorry. Incoming, incoming. We are receiving transmissions from human earthling field reporters. Hi, Flippin' Mosey. My name is Calvin. I live in Maple Grove, Minnesota. I'm reporting on the earthling wombat. This is a, the crazy fact about wombats is they poop out cubes. Bye. Ah! Okay, okay. I like that. Earth certainly is an interesting place. Hey, Flip and Mosey. Hey, Flip and Mosey. I'm Alana from Maple Grove. I'm Alana from Maple Grove. I'm reporting on elephants. I'm reporting on elephants. Elephants eat all day long. Elephants eat all day long. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ooh, sounds like fun. That certainly is an interesting observation. <laughs> Hello. We've been trying to reach you in regards to the warranty on your spaceship. This is our 14th call. Ugh, not again. Spam call? Yeah, and not the delicious meaty kind either. Hi, my name is Annabelle and I'm from Virginia. My field report is that Tasmanian devil babies are born as small as a grain of rice. That's really small. I love your show. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Wow. I didn't know we had so many talented field reporters, Flip. Wow. Earthlings are so cool. If you have encountered any amazing Earthlings in your travels, we want to know. You can use your cellular communication device to call 1-833-4-FLIP-MO. That's 1-833, the number 4, F-L-I-P-M-O. And share your field report with us. <laughs> and now, a word from today's space sponsor. If you're looking for a way to protect your home and property, look no further than Smell Safe. It's the all natural, conflict free way to defend your home and property no matter where you are in the galaxy. At Smell Safe, we detect and protect using natural techniques refined for eons on the remote planet of Earth. With our Earthling Bloodhound-based technology, we can tell who's been by your residence long after they've gone. Days, even weeks. And we can use our more than 300 million olfactory receptors to smell an intruder up to 12 miles away, or even 40 feet underground. 40 feet! Once we detect an intruder, you can let them know you're on to them. Looks like everyone's asleep. Uh, you know, we can smell you, right? Really? And that's when the Ultra Skunk 5000 kicks in, shooting out a 15-foot spray of stinky skunk smell, just like the Earthling does. <laughs> At Smell Safe, we believe that in order to be defensive, you have to smell offensive. It's all natural and earthling based, and it works for creatures on that planet every day. So call today and get the best of both worlds. At SmellSafe, we're good smellers who smell bad. This offer is not available in stores and not recommended for life forms with multiple nostrils or skin sensitivity. Welcome back to the Travel Pod edition of Flip and Mosey's Guide to How to Be an Earthling. We are all about earth smells today. Smelling and smelling. We've already met some earthlings that give off strong odors, and now we're going to meet some special creatures that really know how to use their noses. Right, Flip? That's right, Mosey. Don't you want to introduce us to our next guests? 
Uh, well, I would, but you were the one who got the guests for this episode, remember? Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, um, w what if I didn't actually do that? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it's possible that I only booked the stinky guests. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. Audience, please hold for a moment. We are going to take a short break. <sighs> Mosey! What do you mean you didn't book oh. the guests? Well, I, you said you were gonna book the guests. No, Mosey, I booked the previous guests. It's your job to book these guests. How am I supposed to know the difference between that? That doesn't even make any sense. You said stinky guests. Me? Mosey, why don't you get out there? My head hurts from, from the smell that I'm absorbing from your perfume. Are you really bothering me? And we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that brief interruption there. Yeah. We just had to sort some things out for our next guests. Speaking of which, please join me in welcoming an Earthling with an amazing sense of smell. The uh, Kiwi! Uh, uh, thank you, Mosey. It is greatly pleasing to be here. Chip, chip, chip. Uh, uh, why do you have a banana on your face, Flip? Uh, it is not a banana. It is my beak, and my name is Mrs. Kiwi. Oh, of course. Right, uh, right, right, right. Uh, uh, I am the smallest of all the flightless birds in the world, <laughs> and I am an endangered species. Hmm. I live in New Zealand, and I have a very keen sense of smell. Cheep, cheep. Is that because you have a banana for a nose? It's a beak. <laughs> My nose is actually the tiny bit at the end of it, and it's very sensitive. I can smell a predator from miles away. Well, that is pretty impressive. Okay, our next guest is an earthling who's really down to earth. Literally. She's right down on the ground. She's a snake. Nice. To be here, Mosey. Thank you. Thank you for letting us beam you up. I must say, you um don't look anything like my friend Flip wriggling around the floor at all. Uh, thank you. But why are you sticking one of your tongues out at me? Well, as a snake, I only have one tongue, and I use it to smell. I sense the chemicals in the air to get a sense of what's around me. What? Earthlings smell with their tongues? Not all Earthlings, just snakes. And our sense of smell is excellent. You see, we don't have the same kind of noses that humans or other animals do. We breathe air through the nostrils, but we have a special organ on the roof of our mouth that helps us kind of smell the air particles that our tongue picks up. Wow, that is really cool, Flip. Um, I mean, Miss Snake. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now let's give a warm travel pod welcome to our final nosy guest. See what I did there? <laughs> this earthling is primarily found in North America and can be a little scary. Give it up for the black bear. Um, uh, uh, bear! 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 Flip, what are you doing? I don't know how to do this one. What do you mean? It's easy. Bears just growl and act mean and look for food. Oh, there's much more to a black bear than that, Mosey. Ursanus americanus, as it is also called, has an incredible sense of smell. In fact, these bears are thought to have the strongest sense of smell of any land animal, seven times better than a dog. Bears can smell food over 18 miles away and even detect things that are underwater. <laughs> well then, Miss Bear, tell us, what do you smell here? Okay. A lot of Cragnall number 5.975. Okay, I walked right into that one. And popcorn. <laughs> yeah, I think the baby Binturong might have made a little diddly over there, too. <laughs> there you go! That sounds like a bear. Uh, Mosey! Well, uh, uh, th thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks to all our guests, especially you, Flip. 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 Be nice. <laughs> Well, that concludes this episode.
episode of our How to Be an Earthling Travel Pod. I am Flip. And I'm Mosey. And I think today's show was a big success. We learned a lot about Earthlings that are good at smelling. And here are our three travel tips for anyone visiting this marvelous little planet. Number one, some Earthlings just stink. This planet contains some crazy creatures that give off some powerful smells. But there's usually a good reason for it. Sometimes it is a way to defend themselves. Sometimes it is just the way they are. And sometimes they use way too much perfume. Okay, I see you looking at me. I get it. Number two. Certain Earth creatures are excellent smellers. They use this talent to do many important things, like sniff out danger, find food, and help find their way home. They don't use their eyes or their ears. They just follow their nose. <laughs> and these Earthlings only have one. They do all of this stuff with only one nose. And our third travel tip, sometimes a word can have two different meanings. This can lead to a great deal of confusion, like the word smell, for example. Wait, you're talking about me again, aren't you? Indeed I am, Mosey. You hit it on the nose. <laughs> See what I did there? I made it funny because I said nose. Right, and... right, I got it. Well played. Thank you for joining us on our travel pod. See you next time. Well, thank you, Earthlings, for joining us for this guide to how to be an Earthling. We hope we helped you discover something new about your incredible home planet. And if there's one thing we've discovered, is that your planet is big. You got land, sky, and ocean? Sure, that is way too much for any two intergalactic travel guides to cover on our own. So that is where you come in. We need your help. We can't do this on our own. I need me time. What Mosey is trying to say is that we need your contributions to our Earth Guide. If you happen to notice or learn something interesting or unusual about an Earthling species on your planet, please share it with us. <laughs> you can call us on the Selly Telly Ring a Ding Dingy at 1 833 4F L I P M O. That's 1 833 number 4 Flipmo. Write that down. Your field reports may be used on an upcoming Earthlings travel pod. That's one eight three three four flipmo Just like our names. Flip and Mosey's Guide to How to Be an Earthling is a Tinkercast original production. And all of the original songs you heard in this episode were written and arranged by Jason Rabinowitz and the Pop-Ups. How to Be an Earthling is written by Kenny Curtis and Thomas Van Kalken. Written by... What does that mean? That means they put the words in our mouths, Mosey. Oh, mm. okay. Our masterminds of original sound design are Jason Rabinowitz, Ed Rosenberg III, with help from our senior production director, Jed Anderson. Our show is edited by Jacob Stein with additional production assistance from Henry Moskal. Our executive producers are Guy Raz, Mindy Thomas, and Meredith Halpern Ranzer. A tip of the tentacles to the rest of the Earthling team, including Jessica Bodie, Natasha Crandall, Anna Zagorski, Rebecca Leifer, and Joaquin Friedman. And special thanks to the actors you heard in this episode, including Jen Sanchez and Jason Rabinowitz. And our Earthling alter egos, Courtney Shaw and David Ryan Smith. I ate him, and his voice comes through me. Grown-up Earthlings, you can follow us online at EarthlingPod. Our email address is hello at tinkercast.com. And finally, thanks to you for listening. Without you and your planet, we'd probably be in some remote galaxy screaming into the void of a black hole. But now we're screaming in your ears. Ha! And might I say, those are very oddly shaped appendages. Mosey! Until next time. Flip yeah. Moji's Guide to How to Be an Earthling was made by Tinkercast and sent to you by Wondry.